Welcome. Today we're going to be creating this. All right, so here we are back in After Effects. So let's start by making the first control layer here. So let's go up here, new layer, null object. And let's call this control. All right, now we have the first layer here. So let's start applying some effects. So let's start with some fractal noise, double click. And then let's apply a hue and, nope, wait a minute. Let's apply tint first. All right, double click. And a hue and saturation, bam, all right. And as an extra element, because we're going to be able to control this later on, we want some slider controllers. There we go, double click. So the fractal noise generates a randomized noise across the image. I'll show that in a second. And you can you have all sorts of controls here to modify it. The tint basically just colorizes the black values and the white values to new colors you give it, which is very practical. And the hue and saturation is so that we can modify those colors and offset them, as you can see there. We can offset them comparatively to each other. We can add more color, so to speak, to the color. We can change the brightness, all that good stuff. And last but not least, we have the slider controller. This is just a slider that does absolutely nothing until we connect it to something else. So let's start by naming this Extrude. And actually, let's call tint the base color. All right. Let's duplicate this extrude and let's call it hue amount. Oops. And let's duplicate it again and let's call it, well, delete the two and call it opacity amount. Uh, with a big O, with a big O. There we go. So now we have that part. So let's create now a new layer. Uh, we are solid. Let's call this Aurora. As in the Aurora Borealis. So right now it's completely dark and that doesn't matter. Let's just go over to our control layer and select fractal noise all the way down to hue and saturation. Then go up to edit copy with property links. Now let's go to Aurora and let's pre-compose it, which means that we'll be putting it into its own little composition. So if you go up to layer, pre-compose, and we can just call it Aurora, just like before, as in Aurora Borealis. Move all attributes, and here we go. Now we just paste Control V, all those effects, and now that they're, they're gonna link up to all the effects of this layer, which is awesome. So, right now it's not doing much. So let's start modifying some of these things here. So first of all, we gotta click Colorize. For some weird reason, this does not attach to the effects on the control layer. As you can see here, it's a little bit weird, but Salavi mon chéri. Another thing to be aware about is that when we change the color here in the tint, let's just set it to green. So the hue and saturations colorize is gonna completely overwrite this here color. It's only going to take the saturation and the brightness or the luminance of the color. So don't be surprised if the cut and colors don't match and it doesn't matter, you can adjust this anyway. So let's go back into our Aurora layer here. Let's double click on Colorize Hue. That means it will pop up here in the bottom so we can easily click on the little arrow and modify this expression. So let's start by adding a plus. And let's add a parenthesis here and let's um, let's write index. Index basically is looking at this layer's index, in this case one. And we're going to multiply this by the offset that we created in the previous comp. So let's start by writing comp and uh, quotation marks. We wanted to look at the Aurora clean, as you can see here. And then we wanted to look at a specific layer. So let's start by writing layer and uh, quotation marks. And of course we choose our control layer. Whoops. Now dots effect. Now we choose the effect that we wanted to look at. And in this case, it's gotta be hue amounts. And I'm actually not sure how I wrote it. I can just look here. I wrote it with a small a. So this is incorrect. And now we're just missing one little thing, another parentheses, and one. See, now it doesn't give me any error. So that's awesome, awesome. Now we can go down to opacity, and let's hold Alt button down and click it. Now we want this to do value, so it looks at this layer's original value, minus 
And now start parentheses because we want to do our calculation within the parentheses. We write index. Once again, it's looking at its own layers, index. Then we're multiplying it by the exact same thing as this layer. So we basically just copy this entire thing, copy and paste down here. And we just got to change the name of the effect. So this has to be the opacity. There you go. Opacity amount. Whoops, it's writing it twice. Let's delete that. There you go. So now it's subtracting the offset value that we give it with the original value of the layer. So now we can just click on the little button here. And let's just to minimize it and make it a little bit more clean. Let's just press P for position, not urine. And then let's alt click on the position here, hold the alt button down. Let's start by writing value plus, let's start square brackets because we need to make an array of values because this position has two values. Actually, I forgot something. We have to press the little uh, 3D icon here so we get all three dimensional values. And we're gonna start by saying zero and zero. And here we're gonna do something. Here we're gonna write index Again, this layer's index times or get multiplied, then control V, same as before. And we're just gonna take away and rename this part to extrude. There you go. Now it works. And last but not least, let's apply a unmult in here. Unmult, I will uh, link to the effects in the I will link to the effect in the description. I've used this before, uh, so you guys can just get it. It's free, so that's awesome. So now there's that effect there, which is going to remove the black of the image. If I unclick it, there's black. If I click it, there's no black. So now we can duplicate this layer quite a few times. I'm just pressing Control D a lot of times. Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. Control D. And now let's take a look at our main comp. So let's start by collapsing it, which means that it will retain all the properties of all the 3D layers. So it's one big 3D layer with all the layers. Then we click on the little 3D button so we can move it around. So let's press P and uh, Shift R, just so we can move it a smidge in 3D space, all right? And let's just rotate it, something like this. So right now, absolutely nothing is happening. It's a boring old square. But if we go to control here, let's start by making this swirly noise. And let's decrease the brightness quite a smidge. And maybe increase the contrast and keep decreasing the brightness, something along these air lines. And now let's press extrude. Let's say six extrude. See, already now it, it's starting to have some depth. Uh, hue amounts, we can even say like three. So it actually hues over time, as you can see here. It goes from red to green, so that's awesome, awesome. Opacity, we wanted maybe two. And then over time, the longer it is and the more duplicates it has, it will slowly fade out, which is also awesome. So let's increase the opacity quite a smidge here. Whoa, that was way too much. Let's say 250. Let's decrease the brightness and let's scale it up quite a smidge, 650, something along these lines. So now we're starting to get somewhere. So we still have a square form. We don't want that. So if we go into the Aurora here, Aurora, we can actually make a mask, double click on the ellipse tool and let's just isolate this. It's gonna create a mask. Let me just increase the exposure so we can see what we're doing. It's just gonna make one round mask on the entire uh, layer. So we can easily go into the mask here and let's just decrease the expansion and increase the feather, something along these air lines until we're somewhat satisfied. Now you can just copy this mask, select the rest of the layers here and control V. And now we can unisolate this layer. So if we go back to our main comp, now it has that soft fall off, and that's exactly what we want. So press Shift S on a layer uh, to bring up the scale here. I'm just gonna scale this bad boy up a bit. And let's see, what else can we do here? So let's, we could probably increase the contrast a little bit more, so something along these lines. And let's just shift the, the colors, maybe increase saturation. We can just shift, ooh, look at these colors. We can shift the colors around 60, so it starts with green. I'm just gonna, 
go around with this. So it starts with green and ends in a nice blue hue. All right. And maybe it's a little bit too bright, too saturated. So let's bring down the color of the tint. And we're actually missing that the layers are blending with each other. Right now, they're just in normal blend mode. If we go down here, toggle switches and modes. They're just normal blend mode. So you can press Control A to select all the layers in your comp and set them to screen. There you go. So now they're blend more with each other and look a little bit more gorgeous. All right. We can even duplicate a lot of these layers. Maybe once is enough. Go back here. Uh, look, now we're getting some serious results. Maybe we can decrease the color a little bit more, make it a little bit more subtle. And now we can even animate this. So if we go up here to the noise and I'll click on evolution, we can say time times, let's say 10. I mean, look at this niceness. Now it's starting to move, it's starting to sway. I use this image, uh, the image you can see here with the balloon. I got it from Pexels. I'll link to it in the description. It's a, just a site where you can get uh, free images and it's just based on donations. So you donate to artists or photographers that you really like. So that's awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys can create with this. And I wish a wonderful day with some cheese. See you. Yeah. <laughs>